or have we vir- met virtually before? We've met virtually. Okay. But uh, it's, it's nice to see you. It's good to see Hi. you again. Hi, my name is Julia of Young, but I'm using someone's, um, a colleague's um, computer, <laughs> just so you know. Thank you. We still have people coming in, so let's go ahead and give another um, minute to allow people to hop on and then we can get started. I did start the recording just so everyone knows. So we have some meeting minutes. And thank you, Jay, for starting this off. Please, yes, everyone, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat um, with your name, your organization. We didn't add an icebreaker today. We wanted to. Um, we have a presentation plan, so we want to make sure that we have plenty of time for that and questions at the end. Hey, in the interest of time, I see we still have some people hopping on, but I think we can go ahead and um, start our conversation today. Um, so yes, as you're coming in, please introduce yourself in the chat, give us your name and your organization. And I just wanted to welcome everyone. Um, I know we've also invited some guests that aren't typically a part of the community care coordination team. Um, so welcome to our monthly community care coordination team meeting. Um, today we have a great agenda planned. We've got a tutorial from Find Help to help us um, improve our referrals to resources and um, to the resources that you all are offering. So we're looking forward to that. And then we'll just uh, make some time for some question and answer sessions, have community announcements, and then we'll adjourn. So everyone knows my name is Kim Stinchcomb. I am the manager of the Healthcare Action Coalition. We'd like to start all of our meetings just to write, reminding everyone of the vision and mission of the CCCT. So our vision is that Prince George's County is a place where everyone has access to high quality and effective healthcare services that are well managed, seamless and tailored to their specific needs. And our mission is empowering healthier lives through efficient care coordination with a strategic systems approach. And our presentation today directly aligns with our goal one to identify and improve connectivity with existing community health resources. So we're doing this by uh, selecting and identifying community resource inventories that are available, and then we will work to make sure that our resources in the county are available through those uh, resource inventories. So now I would like to go ahead and introduce our uh, speakers for the day. C.G. Niquette and Heather zuckerweiss Choi will be presenting on Find Help, um, and we're really looking forward to it. So thank you all for joining. Thank you for having us. Excellent. And I have stopped sharing, so I think um, you are welcome to share your screen whenever, and let me know if there's any um, difficulty with that. 
Awesome, cool. Um, well, while I'm getting that set up, just want to thank you all so much for this opportunity. I've um, been very lucky to get to get to meet with uh, several of you all, whether it's you know Jay or Caitlin or Kim, and uh, we we really appreciate the opportunity to um, share a little bit more about uh, Find Help, who we are, what we do. Um, I, I think just uh, to get started, Heather, do you want to quickly introduce yourself, and then I'll uh, kind of take it from there. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. My name is Heather. I am a regional director here at Find Help. Um, been with Find Help for over seven years and previously spent over a decade in the nonprofit space. And so looking forward to our conversation today, um, sharing more about who we are, um, partnering here with CG uh, on this presentation and uh, answering any questions that you have. Awesome, thank you. And I'm CG Nikat. Uh, I've been at Find Help for uh, just about five years now. Um, I was previously on our community engagement team, uh, which is really committed to helping um, nonprofits, uh, service providers use the free the free technology. And so that's really kind of what I wanted to focus um, our presentation on today is um, how folks can use FindHelp.org uh, to search for and connect with free and reduced cost resources. Um, what is the process of sending a referral, closing that loop? Um, getting activated and active on the platform. Um, really would love to treat this as a conversation. So if folks have questions, uh, please feel free to interrupt me. Um, but to get started, uh, we like to kick off all of our presentations with our mission, which is to connect all people in need and the programs that serve them with dignity and ease. And it's this, this last part um, that is really, I think, uh, key and crucial to how we operate. Uh, we were founded in 2010 uh, when our CEO, Aaron, he was around 26 at the time. Uh, his mom was diagnosed with this rare brain disease and he became a primary caregiver. And Aaron didn't really know how to navigate the system because we know how difficult the system can be sometimes. Um, he didn't know about eligibility rules. He didn't know about income restrictions. He didn't know about what kinds of documents were needed upon intake. He didn't even know if certain programs were in fact up to date when trying to Google to find resources. And so luckily, Aaron was a, a coder by trade and started uh, working to essentially digitize um, Austin, Texas, Austin, Texas's um, social uh, safety net. And that's grown to be what we are today, um, four, 14 years later. Um, so what is FindHelp.org? It's an online directory of free and reduced cost services. Um, everything we're talking about today is 100% free. Uh, whether you are looking for help yourself, uh, whether you are assisting someone else access resources, um, or if you are a service provider um, wanting to use the tool um, um, to, to connect folks to resources. Um, we have about 600,000 programs listed across the platform, or 536,000 um, programs listed across, across the platform. Um, these could be local resources, these could be national resources, uh, these could be statewide resources, uh, but all 500,000 of these programs are free or reduced cost, as well as a direct social service. The other thing to note, which I think is really important, is that these programs are being maintained um, on a, on a semi-annual basis. So we have an, an entire uh, team here at Find Help that is responsible for finding programs, uh, getting programs listed, um, and then going back every six months to make sure that we have the most up-to-date information about these programs. So this is a living, breathing resource that is ever evolving. And we'll talk about how you can keep your programs up to date, but also how you can let us know about what may be missing or out of date. Um, Across, across the country, we've got uh, just over 43 million users now. Um, over 100,000 programs um, are already actively using the platform in some, some form or fashion. And I know it's, uh, we're, we're also the country's largest uh, closed loop referral network. Um, so we've seen this grow really significantly since around 20 when obviously COVID was um, in its multiple throws. One question folks always ask us is great, CG and Heather, the site's free, but how do you keep the lights on? Uh, which is a very valid question. I just wanted to address that head on because I think that is important. Um, essentially what we do is we sell um, um, customized versions of the platform uh, to different organizations, whether it's um, folks in healthcare, whether it's folks in government, whether it's folks in um, you know, education or cause related organizations. What we really like about this model is that it allows us to partner with really innovative organizations to bring and find help to local communities um, and keep the, the, the lights on. We don't sell data, we don't monetize data, um, we don't even own data, that's your data. Um, 
but this has been a really um, sustainable way um, to help us both scale um, and keep findhub.org free for anyone who wants to use it. Um, before diving into a demo, I just wanted to kind of call out a couple key stats about our Maryland network. We've been working there for um, some, some time now. Um, Heather actually was based in Baltimore for uh, and until just recently, but we're, we're lucky to have close to about 700,000 users in the state. Uh, we've got over 6,000 programs listed, uh, 1,500 of which are in network, meaning they've claimed their program, they're able to keep their information up to date, they're able to uh, specify the best way to reach them. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see um, who some of our um, partners are um, in, in the state. So whether it's, you know, Hopkins or, um, you know, Children's National, um, a couple different uh, health departments, a couple of different health plans. We are really industry agnostic because ultimately everybody needs help at some point in their life. And so whether you are a health system um, or you're a, a county government, um, we all are looking at the same problems. And so I think that's a really unique thing about Find Health. Um, before I jump into a demo, any questions, thoughts, or comments about what I just covered? Um, awesome. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and share this tab. Um, this is findhelp.org. Anyone can go here uh, right now and start looking for resources. A couple of things to call out about this homepage. Um, one is that we do not require folks to have an account to use us to search for connect with resources. Uh, we know that people are sometimes uh, searching for potentially sensitive subjects and just feel better browsing anonymously, and that's totally okay. We want to respect that. We don't want there to be any kind of barriers to entry. So we do not require uh, folks to have an, have an account to use us. Um, if you do create an account, it will open up access to a number of free tools, which we'll talk about, but again, not at all required. The next thing to note is that the platform uh, can be translated into 130 different languages. Um, so if you're ever working with someone uh, who may not uh, you know, speak English as their preferred language, um, this hopefully allows you to meet them where they are. Um, in the bottom right-hand footer, you can see a couple different um, uh, action items. So suggest program. This is where you can always suggest resources that we may not have listed on the platform. Um, essentially, you just need to provide uh, their name, their website, it could even be a Facebook page, um, and it's going to go right to our data team. They'll verify that's free, reduced cost, um, and get it listed within two business days. You can also always claim your programs, which we'll talk about, um, and then there's just more additional information. There's free trainings and uh, what have you. The most important thing is to actually get started with a zip code, base, zip code based search. And of course, I forgot to look up a local Prince George's County zip code. So could someone give me a zip code, a local zip code to plug in? 20785. Thank you so much. I'm going to click search and it's going to take me to a portal where I can see that we've got 2,700 programs listed that provide services um, in this zip code. And so these could be local programs uh, unique to Hyattsville. These could be um, countywide programs. These could be statewide programs, um, or these could be national programs. Having that long tail of services um, is really important to make sure that folks can see all of the potential programs that can help them, whether it's a you know national utility assistance hotline or something more local. Um, but all 2,700 of these programs are um, being kept up to date. Uh, they're a free or reduced cost program, um, and they are a direct social uh, service. And so. To get started looking for resources, there's a couple different ways I could do it. Uh, one way is I can just hover over these different icons. So food, housing, good, transits, health, et cetera. I can then see that there's additional subcategories and then even further sub subcategories. So this allows me to kind of um, curate my search experience, uh, but also really drill down into that specific need. I may kind of have an idea of what it is that I'm looking for, but I may just not be familiar with what the, the term is. And so hopefully this allows folks to um, get into the ballpark of, of what they're looking for. Alternatively, you can use this um, search bar where you can plug in uh, a keyword. Uh, if there's a specific program you want to find, you can plug that in as well. But just for today's uh, exercise, let's do a food pantry. So I'm going to click on this food pantry tag, and it's going to show me all the food pantries um, providing service in, in this area. And so first thing I will see is that we've got 32 programs listed, which is fantastic. That's um, that's a lot of resources. Um, we don't always see that across the country, so that that's great to see. Um, knowing how many food pantries are out there is great. We do also want to make it really easy to quickly find uh, the food pantry or the program uh, that's the best fit for the person looking for help. Um, so you can always drill down 
into the search results by using different filters. So you can always uh, filter by personal filters, which describe the unique attributes of that person seeking help. So whether it's their age, um, whether it's their, their housing status, um, whether they're a veteran or active duty, you name it. One thing to note is that personal filters are dynamic, meaning that they change and vary uh, based upon what you're looking for and where. So if I was looking for food pantry resources here in Austin, Texas, where I live, I may see different personal filters just based upon what's available. I can also always narrow by program filters so I can specify, you know, how do I want to get in touch with this program? Um, you know, do I need it to be within walking or biking distance um, or do I have access to, you know, reliable transportation so I can do, a, you know, a longer drive? Um, what are its hours of operation? Uh, this is key because we know folks are, they're busy, it's life. They may have multiple jobs, they may have childcare responsibilities, they may have other responsibilities, they may be a student and may not be able to get to a program right now, but knowing what's open late, what's open early, what's open on weekends will be really key. Um, you can always look at cost structure, uh, what languages the programs communicate in, as well as income eligibility. And if you scroll down, you can really then begin to dive into the search results. Uh, so you can always see a map of where these programs are located and then these white boxes, which are what we call um, program cards and program cards contain all the information about individual services. So this first uh, food pantry example, we can see what the program is and then who the provider is. So no limits outreach ministries, uh, no limit, no limits outreach ministries may have multiple services they provide to the community. Each of those individual services um, will be listed as their own program card and you can always click on um, their name to see all the different um, services they provide to the community. Uh, the next thing you can see is the last time this program was reviewed. Uh, so relatively recently, that's great. Uh, you can see a brief program description. Um, you can see what the main services are, um, and then you can click more info to really dive into the details of this program. Um, first thing, you can always print it. So if I'm you know, navigating on someone's behalf and they're not necessarily ready to reach out to this program just yet, that's totally okay. I can always pull up a printer friendly version of this listing. You can have it translated, I can print it and they'll have something in their hand um, leaving my office that they, that they can always reference down the road. I can then see information about eligibility. Um, I can see information about availability. So is this program accepting new clients? I can see a fuller program description. I can see what languages are supported. If there's any kind of cost structure or cost nuance, um, you know, the program's Facebook page, um, if documents were ever required upon intake, that will be no, um, um, included in this description as well. We don't see that with food pantries, obviously, but um, for other programs, if there are specific documents, uh, we'll make a note of that. Um, we'll let make a note as to, you know, where this program is, how far away it is from the center of the zip code in which you're searching, hours of operation, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're trying to do here is reduce any kind of information asymmetry. If I'm if I'm looking for help, uh, I know what this program does. I know if I'm eligible. I know if they have the capacity to help me. Um, I know where they are. I know their hours. Um, and I know if there's any kind of documents I might need so that I'm not wasting my time. Um, so that's all the information that we're trying to provide. And then as a baseline, we want to make it really easy to share this information with folks. So if you scroll back up, you can always print it. But you can also always send it to someone as an email. Uh, you can send it as a text message. You can share it on Facebook. Um, you can specify who you're sending it to. You can always provide a custom message. Um, and again, you can have that translated. So I was um, working with a group uh, the other day and they serve a lot of folks who are uh, Haitian Creole. And so um, basically I sent them a text that was translated um, in, in that, which was pretty cool. Um, on top of that, there's a couple of additional buttons I want to kind of highlight. One is uh, save. This basically allows you um, to bookmark programs. Um, this does involve having a free account, um, but this is a great resource to basically create your own binders of resources that can be organized by geographies or by verticals um, that are going to be living, breathing, up-to-date resources that you can always print, share, um, create unique links, et cetera. Um, you can also always create notes about programs. Um, again, this comes with having a free account, but this allows you to basically um, document any kind of nuances about these programs. Um, so if there's a particular point of contact, if there's um, information about this program having more capacity at the uh, beginning of the week as opposed to the end of the week, you name it, you can document that for yourself. You can actually also share it um, with your teammates. Notes are not ever made public. 
Um, it's not like Yelp. Um, these are for internal consumption only, but hopefully, again, this helps strengthen that connected tissue of getting folks connected to resources. You can also always let us know if something's missing or out of date. So our data team last reviewed this program on May 22nd. Let's say something changed, their phone number changed or their hours changed. Um, we're not going to know that unless someone tells us. We're not going to know that for a couple months unless someone tells us. And so this is how you can tell us. We're basically, um, let us know what changed. Um, if you click send, it's going to go right to our data team. Uh, they're manually going to verify that change um, and then get this program updated within 48 business hours. Um, the other two quick things, and then I want to pause for questions, is in this upper right-hand corner, you'll see this check mark. That means that this program has claimed their listing. Um, and I do want to spend some time talking about claiming because that's essentially the process of taking ownership of your programs um, on the platform. And claiming allows you to uh, keep your information up to date. Um, it allows you to specify what's the best way to reach you, um, whether it's calling you, showing up in person, filling out an already established application form, or actually accepting a referral through the platform, which we'll talk about in just a couple minutes. Um, so we do allow folks to send and receive um, referrals um, and with the corresponding um, outcomes and um, status updates, which we'll, we'll, we'll demo in just a second. Um, also with claiming comes a lot of free analytics um, where basically you can me measure the uh, supply and demand for your program. And you're really able to quantify um, the impact of your program, but you're also able to track all of your outbound referrals as well. So all that comes with claiming, which we'll walk through. Um, but before I dive into a kind of a demo of a, what a closed loop looks like, I do also want to pause again for any questions. Hi, I do have a quick question. Great. Your, um, when it says reviewed on, is that reviewed by the actual organization or is that like anyone that clicked on to the resource? That's a great question. Heather, keep me honest here, but I think there's a variety of ways that indicate a re last reviewed on. So it could be that uh, someone who works for this program logged in and looked at their information. Um, it could also just be that our curation team, which is more likely, may, which may be the case, is that our curation team reviewed this program because uh, it was in their queue because it, it's been a couple months and we wanted to make sure that all this information was still up to date. So we're doing their, their website, their Facebook, their Google profile. Um, to make sure that we have the most up-to-date information. But Heather, is there anything I'm missing when it comes to last reviewed? Yeah, everything you said is true. There's a few extra layers to help us find changes as well. Um, so like behind the scenes, we have technology we use to identify where there might be changes. Everything is still reviewed by a, a human, but like if an organization updates their phone number on Facebook, it actually will ping our team to say, hey, this is different, go and check it out. And then a human goes and verifies it. The other thing that we do is um, you'll notice there's a suggest button on each program card. And so if anybody notices a change, like CG said, they can let us know. Um, that again, creates a ticket for our team and then our team will validate it. So we're getting lots of pings and then, you know, verifying information. Mm -hmm. um, and so that date is, because an organization updated it or our team has reviewed it. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Great, that's a great question. People, process, and technology. <laughs> Put it together. Any other questions? That was a really good one. Yeah, one real quick, and if you're gonna cover this later in the presentation, I'm more than happy to, to hold on until then. Um, but in the personalized platforms, you already talked about an organization, if they're logged in and they've claimed their profile, they've claimed their organization, they'll have access to analytics. We're adding a strategic goal at the Department of Social Services in uh, um, beefing up our uh, ability to capture information about community needs across a lot of different needs and a lot of different sectors. And I'm just wondering if in the personalized platforms, if we actually entered into an agreement with findhelp.org, if some of those data analytics would also be available um, to us, not just about our organization, but about the sector. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, Heather, I'm, I want, I'm gonna wanna tag team this with you. Mm -hmm. I think what would be helpful is just to show 
what you get with just the, the free site itself. I've got some screenshots, so let me just like hop over um, to that real quick. Um, basically, you know, there's all kinds of information about your your specific program. So like where are people searching for your resources at, you know, like a city or zip code level, you know, breakdown of referral statuses, but there's also a search trends in your coverage area, which basically captures um, the searches in the aggregate over the past three months. So how many searches have there been in you know, Prince George's County, for example, this is uh, not Prince George's County, but just um, a screenshot, but also what is a breakdown of searches by category? What are the most common okay. search terms, et cetera, et cetera. With a uh, subscription um, agreement, there is a whole lot more robust analytics. There's like 40 different reports and I'll let Heather um, speak to that much more eloquently than I can. <laughs> yeah. So. Um... With the subscription version, like CG mentioned, there's 40 plus reports. And so this um, search trends report, for example, will not only show search trends across Prince George's County or any region that you might be looking at, but specific to the folks that you're serving who have come to your site of Find Help. Um, it also has a report that lets you compare what's happening on your site to across all of the county. We have um, a social vulnerability report where we actually take CDC data, um, plot that on the map so we can see areas of high vulnerability. And then on top of that, we can actually put like our resource directory so we can see where there might be gaps in resources. Uh, we also have um, like utilization reports so that we can better understand um, not just search trends, but like where are people looking for resources? What are they looking for in a particular zip code? Um, are they clicking on next steps and reaching out to those programs? Um, are we connecting people with the referrals, um, the outcomes of those referrals? We also have other types of functionality like assessments and things like that where we're able to track and report on the data. Um, so just a, a whole nother set of, of information specific to the people that you're serving, comparing it to the region, um, and then also tracking and managing any work or, or reasons why you might be using the, the platform. That's that's frankly astounding. I am. I'm adding that to our draft of the strategic plan right now. <laughs> and uh, if at any point you want to like do a deep dive into reporting, it's my favorite topic. So feel free to reach out to me um, and I'm happy to I, I could spend our whole time talking about it. So <laughs> um, if you want to schedule 30 minutes or an hour or something, I'm, I'm happy to deep dive. <laughs> awesome. Great question. I had a, a question as well, um, and I'm, I'm not sure if this will be later in the presentation also, but you briefly mentioned um, referral options. Mm -hmm. So if there was a subscription agreement, um, someone can do a search and refer to our agency or refer themselves and then the agency could potentially refer a client to another resource. Is that kind of what you're saying? That's a, that that is the functionality, but that's 100 percent like free for right now. So again, jumping ahead because I think that's always fun. Um, all right. So let's just say I've claimed my program. Um, I, you know, I'm using the free site and I want to accept mm -hmm. referrals. I'm going to have a variety of different uh, intake management um, options. Um, so let me just log in real quick. Um, so let's say I'm this claim program. I'm just going to go to the home page to kind of show what this looks like. So again, I've claimed my program. This is what it looks like for me. Notice it's a little bit different from just the not being logged in because I've got all these different options of, you know, free training resources, updating my program listings, viewing my analytics, tracking inbound referrals, managing my team, all of the case, manage, case management tools we provide. Um, but let's say I want to um, specify what's the best way to reach me so i'm going to click on update your programs and then again i'm going to be able to see all my different programs and i'm just going to click on contact settings and so once i'm here there's going to be a couple different options um one could be hey just send us this person's name and contact information that's what we call like a one-step referral uh, which i'll demo in just a couple minutes but very very straightforward as to you know all this is all i need um a lot of times though you probably need more information and so you can actually set up a customized um, screener where you can ask additional um, eligibility questions. You can also configure the screener to instantly assess for eligibility, where basically in your inbound referral dashboard, where you're able to track all of your incoming referrals, you can automatically see if someone's eligible. And you can also configure it so that 
after a person has filled this out, they'll receive customized messages based upon their eligibility status. Because we believe it's really important that folks get um, uh, an immediate response. We don't want folks waiting in limbo. We want them to know right away, are they eligible? Or if they're not, what are some potential next steps? Um, other organizations we work with um, basically want to take advantage of a free scheduler where you can publish open um, intake appointments right through the platform. So someone could basically, um, they want to get in touch with your program, you can set your availability and they can book an appointment um, and then be able to show up at the office for an intake appointment. Um, we also know too that some folks just uh, want people to fill out an existing contact form because they've already done the work of creating it. You can link that and we'll redirect folks to fill out that form um, or if you want them to call or you know uh, go to your website or show up in person, you can specify that as well. So we're trying to provide as many options as possible because we don't believe it's fair or cool um, to tell uh, service providers uh, oh, what's the best way to work to, to we, we, we don't want to we want to respect organizations workflows um, we don't want to make things more complicated um, and so we, we try to provide as many options um, to meet organizations where they are so I hope but all those fun. features you mentioned are part of the free portion mm -hmm. yep exactly. okay and does it there are there nuances that change if you do this uh, the subscription not really no um this is this is all meant to um help nonprofits. so for additional context we originally wanted to be a nonprofit, um but what we felt or what we the conclusion we came to was that um it was going to be kind of counterproductive we didn't want to compete for funding with other nonprofits, so we landed on this public benefit um model um but with being a public benefit corporation we want to provide as many free services as possible. So this, the search functionality is free, but also we, we wanted to provide nonprofits with these, these different intake management tools. Um, and so like none of that changes based upon having a subscription or not. Good question. Any other questions? These, this is fantastic. Hi, I just have one question. Um, is the platform secure? Um, you're dealing with, you know, protected, possibly protected health information or PII uh, personal information. Uh, so is, again, does it adhere to all HIPAA requirements regarding that? Yes, 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 I will, and I will show that. Yes, we are HIPAA compliant, we are FERPA compliant, we are HITRUST certified. Um, privacy and protecting people's data uh, is uh, one of our, like, the, our, 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 our northern lights. Um, so I'll show what that looks like and how we capture that kind of compliant um, compliant issues. But yes, we're 100% HIPAA, FERPA, HYDRA certified. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, great question. So um, do you have um, translators? Do you, you know, have different languages to meet people where they are? Yeah, that's a great question. So let me just go back. Uh, I'm just going to pull it. All right, so we're on this this zip code search right now. You can see right here, I can have everything uh, translated into one of 130 different languages that's powered by Google Translate. Um, so hopefully this allows folks, um, whatever the language is, that this, this is there. I would also call out too that um, when you are sharing information, so like let's say I want to share this uh, No Limits Outreach program with someone, I can have it translated again into any of 130 different languages, whether it's an email, whether it's a text message. Um, so you can have it translated for your own search experience, or when you are um, sharing out information, you can have it translated there as well. Thank you. Cool. Fantastic questions. I love this. Um, awesome. Anything else before I dive into kind of like the whole closed loop? Uh, referral process. I see one more hand raised. Oh, great. Yes. Um, yes, we have a question. Um, did you just say that you can translate this in different languages? Yes. Um, 130 different okay. languages. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So should we just send you an email with the different languages or, um, you know, how, how does that work? Uh, to suggest like new, new languages if, if we don't have it? Currently, is that so? That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. About. Okay, so the languages, you know, we have we in, internally we have about nine different languages. 
you know, but I'm, I'm sure, you know, you probably have something in Spanish, but, you know, we're looking maybe for something more in French, you know, Amharic, uh, Dari, Pashto, uh, Farsi. Gotcha. Um, that's great. I'm sure we've got, I mean, I'm seeing French right here. Um, I would spend some time looking through Pashto right here. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the other languages, but um, with so with 130, like we're not going to be able to capture every every language, but um, hopefully this provides enough of a use of a use case. And um, honestly, feel free to send me an email letting me know if there are certain languages. We, we are a little bit li limited by what Google Translate provides. So if they don't provide a certain um, language, then that kind of um, uh, is a bar barrier for us. Um, but we, if there there's feedback about what what we should lobby for or look to include in the future, all yours. And I'll make sure that folks have uh, my and Heather's emails. Okay. Would you be would be would you be kind to share your email? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. yeah, yeah. No, totally. I'll I'll include it. Um, I'll put it in the chat. Um, or uh, yeah, I will. It, it's basically my name, C G Nika at finehealth.org. Or did you? I'll put our emails in the chat. Thank you. I'm working from one screen today, so it's a little challenging on me on my end. Um, so thank you. I appreciate it. Um, cool beans. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, my name is Liz and I'm with Gasa. And I understand regarding on the site itself that we can manipulate the languages. However, mm -hmm. is there um, a way to search if the people that we are referring to, if that location has a specific, you know, if they have languages, you know, yeah. someone that yeah. speaks Spanish or French or. Totally, totally, totally. So again, if you go up to the top and again, we're using the, this food pantry um, example, if you click on program communicates in, this is where you can see it. So. Um, in this case, there is one program um, that communicates in Spanish. So it, it's going to be dependent on the programs, what languages they, they um, communicate in, but we do have that called out. So you can quickly find um, the program that, uh, in this case, communicates in Spanish. So I'll click on narrow your search and see that this no limits um, program uh, communicates, in, communicates in Spanish. So. Thank or that, you. Two programs. Yeah. And you can also always see that in the program card too um is there's a language uh languages right here so you can see english and spanish so great question cool so i would love to um kind of walk through what the process is of sending a referral so um we've kind of like established the, the basics of this is a free living breathing resource 600,000 program or 536,000 programs um, you can look anywhere in the country. We list about 1500 programs in every single zip code. Um, that's awesome. That's, you know, uh, in, information is power, right? The next step though, is to get connected with programs directly, because again, we want to make sure that people are being able to get connected to programs with dignity and ease. And so that ties to privacy. It ties to, um, that direct answer of a yes or no. It ties directly to, um, that, that warm handoff, um, that's done with, uh, you know, a, a lot of ease and impact. Um, so I'm just going to use a demo. I don't want to um, actually like make a real referral to a real program because that would not be great. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my own hometown zip code. So uh, 40502. And let's say I'm like uh, navigating on behalf of someone named Winston. And Winston you know, recently lost his job and he's looking to get back on his feet um, and is, is really looking for programs that, that could help him, you know, up level and get some new. Um, um, skills so uh, you know i can i can use the search bar or i can hover over these different icons i can see that there's a work subcategory and then a skills and training sub subcategory so i'm going to click on that and let's say this first program that pops up um, is this employment training services program um, there's been some questions about the subscription model um, and this is a good example of things that do come with that subscription one is that you're actually able to configure your search settings with a subscription um, license. So essentially, let's say there's uh, 110 different programs that provide some kind of skills and training. You can configure what 
program do you want to surface up at the top of the search results? Because we know that this employment training services program is um, super effective and uh, always responsive and provides great results. I can make sure that while I still have all 110 programs listed, I'm able to elevate and then actually call out that this program um, is really top notch. And you can configure the language, you can configure the search results. Um, it's great. But anyways, let's say I find this program for Winston. It's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and click refer. And at this point in time, I'm going to specify whether I'm referring myself um, or whether I'm referring someone else. And so I'm going to go ahead and because I'm logged in, I'm going to provide Winston's uh, name. I'm going to I can provide Winston's email or his phone number. Let's just do his phone number. Or actually, let's do his email. Um, I'm going to specify what language Winston communicates in because, again, that's really important for folks to know. Uh, I'm going to specify what's the best way to reach them. I'm going to say email. Um, I can also always make a note that, hey, don't reach out. Um, this is really important. There are obviously um, situations where it may just not be safe to um, have this kind of referral documented or at least someone's contact information documented. So if you click don't reach out, basically that gives a program a heads up that someone's coming, but there's no contact information involved in that. Um, I could always add a comment. So if there's any kind of nuance to this referral, I'm just going to write test. And then to this earlier question, um, I'm going to confirm that I have Winston's um, consent to share his information with this program. And so that ties to us being HIPAA compliant. It ties to us being high trust certified, um, but also just fundamentally, we believe that people should have control over who has access to their information on this platform. Um, and so we need to capture that Winston saying, it's okay for us to share this information. And we re require that for every single referral that's made on the platform. Uh, once I click send, three things are gonna happen at this point in time. Uh, one is that Winston's going to receive an email letting him know that he has been uh, referred to this program. Uh, the second thing that's gonna happen is that this program, because they've opted to receive referrals, um, are going to receive an email notification letting them know that Winston has been referred to this program. And the third thing that happens is that uh, this referral will now be logged in the system with a corresponding status that could be updated uh, by Winston, by myself, uh, or by that program. And so let's say I'm this program. I'm uh, the Employment Training Services um, program. I'm going to receive uh, an email notification letting me know that I've been, uh, that Winston's been referred to my program. Um, but I could also always log in and then go to my inbound referrals. And this is where I can track all of the folks who have been referred to all my different programs. And um, forgive me, this is actually a new user interface we, we rolled out um, just earlier this week. Uh, I, I know some folks are probably familiar with our old inbound referral dashboard. Um, this one's really, really exciting um, because I'm able to basically uh, get access to a whole lot of new um, uh, um, um, functionality where basically I can see let me find this program real quick great so i'm going to click on my employment training services dashboard and i'm going to be able to in just a second see winston's name uh, that he was referred to us by cg um, i can see on what date he was referred to us on i can see that there was actually a comment in this case it's a test um, and then i can see a referral status so let's say you know i get in touch with winston I'm able to you know, say, yep, we're able to provide him with assistance. I'm going to click on got help. So I, as the program, knows what happened. Um, Winston knows what happened. And then CG as the navigator is actually able to go to the people I'm helping dashboard where he can pull up Winston's profile and be able to see you know, any goals he's created for Winston, any kind of referrals, and then again, see that he is that Winston got help as well. So again, that's kind of how we're working to um, clo close that loop. Um, there's a lot of additional tools that come with, um, with or folks able to see, sorry, I'm not used to Teams. Here's this people I'm helping dashboard where I'm able to see that Winston got help. This status was updated. So I can always add notes. I can upload any kind of documents. I can make, um, you know, edit Winston's contact information. I can create goals for Winston. Um, you name it, but that is essentially the process of finding a program, sending a referral, and then being able to close that loop based upon um, the outcome of that referral. Additionally, there's uh, tools like data collection forms where let's say I'm a food pantry, 
I want to capture more than just um, did I help Winston? How many bags of produce did I provide to Winston? So I'm going to go back to this inbound referral dashboard where I can see that there's different forms um, that I can basically customize to capture more information. Um, again, all this is tied back to the free reporting for um, a, a, a service provider. So I'll pause there for any questions. I know we're coming up on time, so real quick, and then kind of just happy to open this up to um, whatever makes the most sense. Um, I want to encourage folks to claim their listings. Um, to claim your listing, all you need to do is, let me log out real quick, is go to the bottom um, right-hand footer, which is basically on every page in the platform, where you can click on Claim Programs. Um, once you're here, you can look for your program. So let's do a uh, voices for a second chance. So like name of your program, uh, a zip code always makes it a little bit easier to find that program. Let's say this is your program. You just click claim, click I work here and then create your free account. Basically it's your first name, your last name, your work email and a password. Our system automatically cross checks your email with your program um, URL. And if it's a match, it's an automatic claim. You'll get an email from us. Um, and you're off to the races. If you do not see your program listed, again, all you need to do is suggest your program. So next to claim, you can see suggest program. And this is basically where you let us know uh, if something's missing. So it's a basic search and then providing us again with, you know, a website, a phone number and a good email address. And once that your program's listed, our data team will create it. They'll let you know that it's listed and they'll send instructions for claiming it. Or I know Heather dropped our emails. I'm always happy, or someone from my team is always happy to chat one on one. So um, again, I want to make sure we have enough time for questions. But this has been a really, really wonderful conversation. So I, I appreciate your all's time and happy to dive into anything in, in more detail. Well, I would just like to say this is an incredible resource, and um, and again, uh, as far as pricing, I just it, I, I was in and out, but I heard the gist of it. But as far as pricing, is this free for service, and it's available for anyone for use? So everything we talked about today is 100% free. You can use it today, 100%. If there is more stuff in terms of like customizing the platform which you can do in terms of the reporting in terms of integrations we 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 integrate with all kinds of systems of record um that comes with a subscription model which heather can talk about in more detail but everything that we just talked about today is 100 uh, percent free right now great great and you mentioned again i just want to circle back about uh integration so it as far as the specifications for anyone's platform, that interoperability of information can flow one way or bi-directional, am I correct? So I'll let Heather take that one. Okay. Can you just repeat that question one more time so I answer it? Sure, um, we're in a stage of interoperability. Mm -hmm. And I know you mentioned something to the effect of being able to integrate with other systems. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, interoperability option is available mm -hmm. uh, to be able to communicate with uh, other platforms, uh, yeah. both bi-directional. So not only will your information flow into that system, but mm -hmm. uh, information from the other system may be able to flow into yours if applicable. Yeah, great question. Um, so we have many different integration options just depending on the system of record that you're using um, who's managing it and kind of what you want your workflow to look like but we have um, launch integrations where we can share information from your system of record into find help so that you can use find help um, with data you've already captured somewhere else and we also can send data back through um, an api or through like a sql Mm -hmm. data flow. Um, we also have all sorts of APIs available to send data back and forth. So lots of integration options. We know how important interoperability is um, yeah. in really building this into workflow. And so 
Um, most of those integration options are a part of our subscription version, um, but there's also things that we do, for example, with like Salesforce um, for community organizations who have claim programs. So um, if this is something of interest, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me and we can identify what systems you're using and you know what type of interoperability you're interested in. Great, thank you so very much. Yeah, great question. And one thing that just, just occurred to me, um, so I met Jay back in the summer of 2020 when we were called Aunt Bertha at the time. So folks may have heard of Aunt Bertha, just wanted to make sure that I was being clear that Aunt Bertha and Fine Health is, is the same thing. I realize I didn't even <laughs> mention that and some folks know us as Aunt Bertha and others as Fine Health. So just random thought I should have mentioned an hour ago. <laughs> Thank you so much, Heather and CG. Um, I wanted to see, I, I see that our action items are kind of making sure that facilities and organizations are claiming their listing. Do you have any um, promotional materials that kind of explain some of those quick steps that people can do or anything that we can share out? I've, I was kind of taking notes of the step-by-step, -step, but if anything exists, we would love to share that to help people um, and as Jay mentioned, online tutorials maybe that we can promote. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, we I'll also in, in, as a follow up, but we've got YouTube videos. That's a step by step. We offer, also offer monthly trainings that are conducted live that folks can join and ask questions. Um, and I'm sure we've got some a one pagers and collateral. Um, I just needed to do a little bit of digging, but we can provide all that so that folks have it as a resource. Happy to happy to do that. And thank you. Thank you so much. Does anyone else have additional questions? Okay, well, we have your contact information in the chat. We'll be sure to send that out to the rest of the group as well in case anyone has follow up questions or they need assistance getting uh, set up. But thank you so much. This has been a great presentation and um, extremely valuable. Thank you all so much for having us. This is this has been a really um, wonderful way of during the day and uh, we, we appreciate all that you all do. And if there's anything we can do to support you all, you all are doing the, the really important work. So if there's anything we can do, just let us know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I agree with Jay. I am also a Find Help fan girl. So this is yes, so good. Thanks for having us. Excellent. Well, as we get ready to close out, I just have a couple more things um, to share with the group. We want to go over some community announcements. So for everyone um, that's a member of the coalition, we are coming up on our Healthcare Action Coalition in-person quarterly meeting, which will be on June 11th at 6 p.m at the Parks and Recreation Administration building. So we will, yes, be in person. Uh, registration is now available. Um, we'll have poke bowls. It's gonna be great. Uh, so please, please feel free to join us and just take the opportunity to, to mingle with everyone and, and get some FaceTime. I also wanted to share, I don't think Kelly is on, but um, they ha have uh, this ongoing local interactive network of knowledge shares event. There is a session coming up in on June 13th. Uh, so we would like to promote that to make sure that people are aware of these resources. And then we, we have uh, Juneteenth coming up next month. So Bowie is having their third annual Juneteenth Festival on Saturday, June 15th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then also the Parks and Recreation uh, is having their Juneteenth celebration uh, also on June 15th from 12 to 5. So these will be um, sent out with the notes for everyone. Um, but we encourage everybody to take advantage and celebrate. And then lastly, our next uh, CCCT meeting will be June 27th. Uh, it will be virtual. So we look forward to seeing everyone there. If there are members, I know we we shared this meeting with the rest of the coalition members because of how valuable the information was. But if you're not a recurring on the recurring CCCT invite, please reach out uh, to and I will put our email in the chat. 
Uh, but please reach out and we would love to have you come back and talk about access to care. And with that, if there's any additional uh, community announcements that anyone would like to share, we would like to open the floor. Um, so we want to share that, you know, we are a community uh, a SNAP ENT employment and training organization here in the, in the county. And uh, if anybody has a, a SNAP recipients that would like to be uh, engaged in employment and training programs, you know, uh, let us know uh, now uh, they have to be already a SNAP recipients because that's what the grant um, requires. And uh, what I'll do, I'll just share our email in the chat and you can email us and we can just send you some information regarding that. Great. And if you have any um, information or flyers that you can send, we can promote that through our newsletter as well. I see a hand raised, Alicia. Yes, um, I just want to introduce myself. I definitely enjoyed the meeting and I'd love to be added to the list um, for the reoccurring meetings, but I wanted to just introduce myself and uh, let this team or this in, these individuals know that we are accepting uh, new referrals. We provide outpatient mental health services as well as mental health uh, mobile treatment services. And we, um, have an office in White Plains and also in uh, Largo. So we provide services uh, in the entire Prince George's County area. Uh, one thing that's unique about our services is that we have mobile treatment services. So we provide uh, therapeutic services for individuals with severe mental illness in their natural environment. And I was super excited to see um, our listing in the Find Help um, directory. So that was pretty cool. Excellent, thank you. Can I ask a follow up question, Ms. Dalton? Um, does that include uh, uh, diagnostics in the field? That's been a real challenge for us to get people who are literally unsheltered into a doctor's office. And in a lot of cases, they'll need a diagnosis in order to take the first step in a number of different directions. And having, having an organization that can actually do in-field diagnostics would be incredibly helpful for our street outreach team. Sure, we've been known to um, do that, um, but we do provide transportation to individuals to come into our office to see a um, nurse practitioner or a psychiatrist. But I, you know, I don't know if some people know that if you uh, are homeless in Maryland, you can set up in regional parks for two weeks, two weeks at a time. And so we've actually sent our nurse out to give injections to individuals. So we, it's something that we can definitely work through. And we do have providers that are used to going into the field. So um, if you'd like to have a chat offline to talk about that, I'd love to. Yeah, uh, that would be, that would be great. Is your, um, do I already have your contact information? I feel like I, I already. I put it in the chat, but I'll do it again. So it'll get back to the top. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much. I'll reach out to you soon. Sure. Awesome. Thank you all. All right. I see we are at noon. Any last announcements to share? And if you think of something, please feel free to reach out. And like I said, we'll be sure to send it out with notes and or our uh, biweekly newsletter. So thank you all for joining and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day. Did you get it, John? Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. You got it? OK. Yeah, it actually, I didn't realize you were with QCI. I missed the QCI part. We work very closely with Denura Coleman already, who's oh, completely yeah. integrated in with our system. So so yes. we're good. Good, good, good. Okay, Let's still meet, though. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'll, reach, I'll reach out to you. Okay, cool. Bye.